All right, guys, today I'm going to teach you guys the biggest skill matchup of Riven top lane, which is the Riven versus Fiora matchup. Now, for this, we have the Conqueror page, pretty classic. We also have the Transcendence, and we have the Gathering Storm. Of the past. Now, Riven versus Fiora is, in my opinion, a fun matchup because it heavily, uh, heavily comes down to whoever plays it better basically wins. Um, if you can successfully sidestep the the parries and constantly shield away the Fiora Qs and constantly have good trades over and over, it's actually a very easy matchup. There you go. Throwing it back at him. It's actually a bone plate or well, actually a grass Fiora, which is really good. Just walking out of range so that gets reset. He's about to reach level 2 right here. Nice try. So yeah, we're going to be chilling. Just uh, We're going to take it easy until we reach level 2 and 3. Specifically level 3 is when we start like outplaying the Fiora. Maybe we can try to get like an early kill on Fiora. Although I highly doubt it. We have like 3 pots ready and set. So I definitely don't mind like using them right here to thin out the wave. He's probably going to reset after this one. Mm, too bad. There you go. I'm going to hold it. Sure. You take the dam- Like, I'll take the damage, but I get to freeze down the wave. I'm happy with that. Get that trade-off. You always want to be unpredictable in the matchup. So you want to queue at super random times. So that she doesn't hit the parry. Hmm, she's gonna try to hit it. She doesn't want to go for the farm anymore. Okay, if she parried that, I would still dodge it. Because of my, uh, my third Q, like, walking to the right. And that's where she goes down. And I got her. So the way how you trade Fiora in short, it's very, very straightforward. Wait. The way how you trade is... I have like a little little tactic for this. Um, let's try. You're not going to get me. So the way how you trade Fiora is instead of like lining up yourself to Fiora like most people do... You want to like, kind of like, uh, move from left to right, kind of like wiggling around, and then using your mouse to cue into the direction of Fiora. If you do that properly, she can't predict your stun. It's really hard to do it. Like most people, when they play Riven against Fiora, they tend to instantly walk up, like lining up directly like this to Fiora. That's bad because you will make them know that you're about to engage, right? You don't want to give them that. Um, you don't want to show them that. So secondly, you can sidestep a parry, which most people don't know. So if you queue into Fiora, you can basically move to the side and then dodge the parry. Even though it hits, it doesn't actually lend the stun or nor anything at all um, if you do it perfectly. So it's like this matchup heavily comes down to the way how you move. We get hit by this, sure. Just gonna try to shield. Just gonna try to Q again. Okay, she will try to Q. No. Nope. They have their Jonah being dead right now, but I'm gonna place a ward down anyway, so I can prepare for this. She will Q. We block that. We're about to reach my level uh, level six very soon. Show Q here. Let's try. We are definitely losing a little bit of farm to make these trades work. Ooh, she didn't parry this. She's deciding to all in here. Hmm. Not bad actually.
He didn't parry, no. Let's try, though. The all-in that VR did was actually really good. But she couldn't get the ultimate off because I knew better. Hmm. I don't have my ultimate yet. That's the problem. I'm not very happy with not getting my ultimate yet. Because I could technically get a catch right now. But, um... Hmm. She's going to try to dive me. I I I'm going to see if I can turn here. She parries? Okay, that's killable. I'm not very happy with how I played out this part of the laning phase, though. I can burst her down, but it's too risky, so I'm just going to leave it. So you can kind of tell, like, what I did wrong there. I took, like, a lot of damage from the ultimate. And I tried, like, forcing Fiora into using her parry. But it actually ends up like she was holding her parry till the very... Um, till the very last second, which means that I got to lose the the traits over and over. The thing is, like, with Fiora, you have to try to bait down the parry. The parry is what matters the most here. If that goes down, you can directly all in after, as long as you have HP, of course. But, um, really comes down to, um, how she plays it. There's a huge skill gap in between. So I suppose that she's probably backing now to try and reset. So I'm going to hard push this one so she loses all the fall. Good. Now we have that being pushed into the wave. See if I can take a plate by myself. Awesome. We get our own plate right now. All I'm interested in is being able to push down this wave right now and then resetting once again. Because that would get grant me a pretty nice advantage. That's the bone plate. And now we back off. Now I'm going to show you a little trick here. We are now 9 minutes in the game. We just pushed this into the tower. Which means that I can reset right now. Grab my longsword. And we can get my tier 1 boots. And while she's pushing down this wave. It will drag into my tower. Which means I can probably freeze it right there. At least I hope I can. Fiora's wave clear is ridiculously bad early game. So... You can use that to your advantage. Okay. You see? The wave is now in this spot right now. It's in my favor. And now we just keep it here. Got the bone plate out. You always have to get the bone plate before you approach for your guys. I can't tell you enough about this. We win that trade, as you can tell. That's where she goes down. I use my ultimate to bait down her parry. Unfortunately, she, do she does get away, but I used my ultimate to make her parry. So she nearly parried herself to death right here. That's what most of your players do. They tend to, like, parry the ultimate down. Which is extremely inefficient. And Jarvan gets the kill on her. And we get the assist for it, so... I get another one... We can try to get a second one. That goes down. Thankfully he's not stealing it from me. And now we can afford my iron spike. Nice. We walk back to lane now. 
So now as we walk back to lane, guys, this wave will be pushed into the center again, which means if I arrive, I can engage with my third Q and then back out sidestepping the parry and then seeing if I can all in again after that. Um, the only thing is I have no R. It's like 30 seconds, but we can work around that. I think I can probably get a kill without my ultimate. If I can sidestep the parry now. She will Q this one. I'm going to drag uh, Fjord to my jungler. Got my pot, so if I can hit it like a couple times, it's okay. She doesn't have bone blade, so this is going to be a free kill for me. I'm going to charge my Qs now. Okay, here we go. And, well, and we got her. So you see, like, as long as you do not get CC'd by the parry, which is what I'm trying to say 100 times now, um, you should be okay as long as you don't get, like, uh, chained up by the slow, like the auto slow. You're all good. You just gotta sidestep the parry. That's the best thing. If you get hit by the parry, you're dead. I guarantee you, you're going to lose lane if you get hit by a pair even once. Like, that, that thing will just destroy you. I take all of this stuff. Let's see if we can get one more camp before we go back. How friendly from Fiora, giving us this camp, right? Don't you guys agree? Only if she knew how low I actually was. <laughs> if Only if she knew that I was literally taking a camp with like 400 HP right there. <laughs> oh, you reset. Uh, quick questions. Why do you max W instead of E? Um... Why can't... Oh. The reason why I max W instead of E is because W provides more damage. More clear. More CC. Um, so many things that can push your lead. You know, being able to clear faster. Being able to do the more damage. Getting your CC off faster. It's more... It's a lot better than, uh, than maxing E. Well, you're dead because Yon is coming top lane. Or at least he was coming top lane, but uh. My hands are Hello there, Lilia. I don't think you realize how fed I am. Charge up. Okay. My spirit is not lost. Well, let's see. We're going to kill her. I'll played. I got you. <laughs> See you later. And we go back to base. So. Let's go for... Go for Hydra. I want to take the blue buff for myself, actually. Yeah. 
Yeah, I'll take it for myself. So I can push my lead, get the XP for myself. There we go. You see my team is struggling. We're having the best time ever. That's I said Juwani in our jungle, but hey, I don't care about that, so. This guy's dead. Good luck. You can't run from a four dashing uh, champ. You see, you can you can sidestep a parry. Okay, that didn't land. But my ultimate's like 45 seconds anyway, so. I wanna get this camp here. Why did you take Hydra this game? Um, I took it because we're already snowballing and I can use the, the Hydra to farm faster and do damage. Okay, thank you Yasuo, appreciate it. Too massive, they can stop me. Ah, uh, yeah, the chasing is not really worth. We just go back top lane. Uh, why did you go for Ghost Blade? I'm actually thinking about buying it as a third item, to be honest. I just want to have sustain, and Ghost Blade doesn't really provide that stuff, so. Sustain is really good to have because it allows you to stay in the game, right, without going back to base. I want to get to farm in mid lane for myself, actually. My spirit is not lost. Okay, let's get this camp. I want to get this one done. Their uh, red buff is spawning now, so we're going to go over there. Hmm. <clears throat> You blindly buy Gorchink as a first item? Yeah, that's that's fine. You don't have to buy anything else than Gorchink your first item. Like Riffin does not work with other items. Like Eclipse is a pretty bad item. Uh Prowler's Claw is a bad item. Like Define Sonner is a bad item. A anything you build on Riffin is just a bad item. It's not necessarily bad, but it's like Gorchinker just beats all of the other items. Like still, you know. No matter what kind of change that Riot is uh, putting through these items, it's like Gore Trinker just beats all of them at all times. You know, maybe Define Sonner could be one, but it, it it's not going to combine well to get over the Riffin. The lethality items are also pretty trash. You know. Well, good luck trying to run. I got you. You don't get a triple. Nice. Uh, we can get this camp here. I'm thinking about getting a grudge, you know. So let's go back to base once again. This time we're going to buy maybe a chain sword. That would also do fine. Stopwatch. There you go. Bring 
Riffin has... Well, the thing is, Riffin doesn't just have carry potential, but Riffin has more than that, man. Riffin has... Riffin is good at everything. Laning phase, early game, mid game, late game. Riffin is one of the best late game champions in the game, by the way. Just saying. Like, the the the, the potential we have in team fights, in split pushing, and everything all combined. There's a reason why Riffin is S plus tier for so long right now. Like, Riffin even outscales, like, champions late game. It's incredible, you know? Like, put a put a Riffin against a, a, a Jax in the late game. You can actually win against a full build Jax. Like, not kidding, actually. You could even win against a full build Fiora if you want to. Or even against a full build Vladimir, you know? It's all possible. Either way, guys, this is Riven top lane in the um, in skill matchup. Uh, before today's YouTube video ends, the same thing as always. I stream every single day. You know, link inside the description. Make sure to check it out. But uh, yeah, with that being said, with that being said, see you in the next one. Peace.